and you can adjust the foam as I explained to you. See, that's a dryer foam. You can continue to adjust it until you're happy with it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, be sure and call us at 1-800-433-2113. Have a good day. This is Robert Hindelider with Delco Cleaning Systems. I have Ted Webb sitting beside me, and we're going to give a short narrative for the uh, milk tanker decontamination exercise for foot and mouth disease with FDA. Right here, we showed you pulling on a tarp. That the yellow things in front are nothing more than uh, noodles like children use for swimming pools. We put that on the end of the tarp, and above that, in the uh, was. PVC pipe three inches cut in half and it makes the berms that's a flat top and it's wrapped around the top on the edges to form a berm. You're not trying to create a swimming pool or a wading pool to handle a lot of water. You're going to pick it up as soon as it gets you, as it falls on there and on the uh, bottom left hand corner there there's a sump pump and there's a tanker pulling across the berm which is those uh, noodles at the end right now so it's a fairly simple way to put it down but we'd failed to make a video of laying uh, there they are they're just tucking it on the end now it's best if it's on a uh, slanted surface we didn't put any berms at the far end because that the water run to the back left hand corner of the pad where we'd pick it up with a sump pump from the sump pump we put an oil absorbent boom now then the basis of the test was that these are going to be clean tankers before they go into a, a uh, uh, so we're not going to be cleaning them for uh, cosmetic reasons or to get heavy mud, uh, mud and dirt accumulations off. The tanker should all already be clean. We've done several tests with hot water, cold water, uh, several different types of foamers. Basically, we're here using a six foot wand, and it's got about a 17 degree bend on the end of it. And it's so that, in other words, it's weightless. Uh, you notice I'm the operator actually in that film there, so you notice I can hold that up above my my head. So the only thing I'm holding is back pressure. Uh, basically, we're going to wash the thing down first. It took about 20 minutes, roughly to rinse one of these tank tankers down. We done tests as I mentioned with hot and cold water and we noticed basically we was dealing with road film, light road film and milk scum and those come off fairly easily. So uh, the main advantage of hot water would be uh, the reason for using it would be sanitation. If you're going to get the top of everything you're going to have to on a conventional you're going to have to uh, tilt that uh, hood on the tractor. When you rinse, you want to be sure you rinse any water or anything that might was on the top. So the first thing we did was, of course, laid out the pad, pulled across it. Uh, we were shooting to try to keep the cost down so minimal. So this is a emergency type situation, decontamination test that we're running. Ed, you want to add something right now? And actually, we're just rinsing the vehicle down to get it prepared for the uh, the decontamination process, so that they can get an actual account of what's coming off of the vehicle, the pH level, etc. They'll be testing later on in the video uh, from the tote and uh, the rebalancing of it before they dispose of the water. At this point we haven't shown the, the foaming action yet for the demo, but trying to get more in line with how to address washing this particular vehicle for this application. I understand we're using Divasan, if I pronounce that correctly, 
Divasan Active, uh, which is requested by Milk Co. for this decontamination process. Uh, the project coordinator, I might add, was Buddy, or Charles, president of Milk Co. Incorporated uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. But he was on site along with many influential and affluential individuals associated with this process. Um, state regula regulatory individuals, uh, a long list of them. I apologize for not naming them right now, but I'm sure this video will have that on a list for references in case you have any questions. Uh, there was another chemical involved in testing. We did not get to that, but we'll be in uh, laboratory uh, testing processes later on. At this point, we're up on top and we're looking at how to clean that top uh, entry port there and some issues come out about washing around that with exceptionally high pressure. Uh, we're, we're trying to maintain also direct blast but not too much pressure so that we don't actually uh, uh, ruin the seal or inject any water or decontamination uh, uh, chemicals etc into the milk. We're basically just trying to get the vehicle clean and decontaminated. You notice once you get three or four feet away from that nozzle it has almost no pressure and there was concern about that top ring that Ted was talk, uh, had mentioned earlier. The reason we use this uh, Divasan Active by Johnson Diversity Company, and I probably pronounced those wrong, and DuPont Active Vercon S was because that was approved by the FDA for use. Our preferred uh, insects or sanitizer would have been acetic acid, and they're take, taking a look at that. Acetic acid can be used, it's easier to get, it's uh, less expensive, and there's a wide variety of sources to use for that. Uh, basically, uh, since we didn't have any live organisms or anything that we could test with, the kill rate was based on the pH level plus the dwell time. And here while I'm doing this particular thing at this point here, I don't show it real close on the video, but I used uh, 1500 psi, 2000, and 3000 psi. I used 2 inch, 48 inch, 60 inch, and 72 inch wands basically to get down in different places plus hot and cold water test. Uh, we just had run, run the test and what we was getting into. This was a work in progress so this film is sort of along that, that way. If it would be made a little bit different it was making this an instructional video but this is a a DVD made from that particular test and several people had their cameras and we took the footage together from all of them. This particular here I was starting to put the uh, sanitizer on. We uh, used about four or five foaming different type of foam nozzles. With There's no foaming agent in the sanitizers themselves so the contact time was about like putting water on the surface it would just run directly off it wouldn't stay there any length of time at all and so that didn't give us the contact time we needed we tested several different types of foamers the one that would give acceptable contact time which of course is always it's the one in the foreground there and uh, we had to have one that would inject air into the uh, liquid stream to get a contact time long enough to uh, do any good. Now we have, since the tests have been run, we have run multiple tests with uh, the foamer. We have got several generations above that. Right there I'm using about a four foot wand. Uh, so far we've got about a six inch lance now that will throw that foam about 20 feet so that it would be easier for the applicator to apply.